Predator coming out in just a few weeks, it seemed like the perfect time to revisit all three of the original Predator films, to review them, to explore the interesting production that brought them into existence, and hopefully introduce a few new people to this iconic action franchise. With that said, we're going to get started with this journey to the Predator with my review of the original Predator. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate to that, that you like to talk about movies more than the people around you, you just might be in the right place, and consider clicking that subscribe button if you do enjoy this video. With that said, yesterday I posted a poll asking people for their take on the original Predator, and here's what they had to say. So after 9,000 votes were counted, 2% of people said it sucks, 5% said it was overrated, 16% said it was good, 21% said that it was great. Here's the shocking one. 56% of people had not seen Predator. So those results are very interesting. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to share some of the comments from that poll, what you guys had to say about the movie. But of course, the most interesting thing there is that 56% of my subscribers and regular viewers have not seen Predator. Predator, which at first kind of shocked me. And then I stopped to think about it. If I look at my demographics, a high, high, high percentage of my viewers are under the age of 25. And my main kind of biggest, most popular content are MCU films. So it's not terribly surprising that a bunch of my audience members that love Marvel movies haven't seen a rated R movie that came out 5, 10, 15 years before they were born. And hopefully because of this review and because of my channel, some of them will check it out for the very first time. If you're one of those people that checked out Predator for the first time because of this review, please tell me down below in the comment section. I would love to hear that feedback. I actually decided to change the way I was going to do this video just a little bit in light of the fact that so many people haven't seen the film. So while this video is designed for people that have seen the film, I'm not going to put any spoilers in this video, even though there's not a whole lot with this movie to spoil. And hopefully I can convince a few of you to check it out because of this video. Before we get started, I'm going to kick it off by talking about some fun facts about the Predator. Number one, the screenwriters were originally inspired to write the script after Rocky IV came out. There was this joke kind of circulating that the only person left for Rocky to fight would be some sort of alien hunter or predator, and they were inspired by that idea and wrote a script called Hunter, which later became Predator. Number two, Shane Black, the writer and director of Iron Man 3, as well as the writer and director of the current The Predator, was an actor in the original Predator film. Though he wasn't hired because they wanted him as an actor, they hired him as an actor because they wanted him on set so he could work on the script on demand, and that's why he showed up as an actor in the film. Number three, the original Predator design was totally different. It looked more like a human-sized grasshopper, and the way they filmed it on set was this weird looking red suit and it just didn't have the right vibe. So mid filming, they brought in Stan Winston to come up with a new design that we now know and love. And even James Cameron chimed in with some ideas for the face design for the Predator. Number four, speaking of the character design, the actor inside of that original red suit was Jean-Claude Van Damme, who apparently hated working on the movie. He wanted to show off his martial arts skills, which would make sense, but that's not what they needed him to do in this movie. He was essentially just a stuntman, which he was not happy about at all. So when they did the redesign, he was replaced. They decided to bring in an actor that could dwarf Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that was not Van Damme. And number five, instead they cast Kevin Peter Hall, who is seven feet, two inches tall. At the time, he was also playing Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. And after a long, hard shoot in the forest where he's wearing a heavy suit, they decided to reward him with some on-screen time as the helicopter pilot. If you enjoy those sorts of behind the scenes stories after you watch this video, check out these two videos above. They dive into more detail about all the stories I did talked about. Tons of fun stuff with the behind the scenes stuff on this particular movie. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. The starting point for why this movie works is that it takes a simple premise and it tells it really well. It takes its time slowly building up the energy, the tension, the excitement. It's a movie where while it's one of the best action movies ever made, the first action sequence is about 25 minutes into the film. It just establishes the characters, the world, and it 
it slowly starts building the sense of mystery about what is going on, what is this mission that they're on, and then once it lets out, once the action starts, it does not let up until the movie is over. What John McTiernan does so well is build this visceral sense of tension. At the beginning of the movie, you have this set of soldiers that are so confident, they're just joking as they're going in on this rescue mission, and they effortlessly go through the first wave of their mission. But then as the movie builds on, it's kind of like a loose guitar string being tightened and tightened, and they start to realize what's going on, and they're getting weirded out by finding these dead bodies that are skinned alive. And then things start happening, and these confident soldiers just start to lose it as they realize they are no match for whatever this predator is that is hunting them. And John McTiernan just keeps tightening it, tightening it, and you just feel like it's going to snap at any point in time until the credits roll. And since this is an action movie, you have to talk about the action itself. And here, John McTiernan does a great job providing vibrant, dynamic, and diverse action sequences. It kicks off with the first one, which is an all-out classic action movie shootout, which is shot in a way where you can see what's happening, wide-angle shots, explosion. There's always multiple things happening in each frame of the action sequence. And then it moves from there. You have sequences where people are being sniped off, where there's little cat and mouse scenarios going on. You have actual fist fights between Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Predator. You have Arnold setting traps and trying to lure him in and all these things. You don't feel like the action sequences are repeating each other. It's not like beat after beat that all feel the same. Each one of them has something distinct and unique about them. And as the movie moves along and it goes from a bold team of soldiers down to just Arnold versus the Predator, all of it has a unique feel to it. Speaking of that group of soldiers, what they did really nicely with this movie is they cast big personalities to fill out the film. It's not like a character driven movie where you need everyone has these big character arcs. Instead, it's about these soldiers that are fairly one dimensional as these types of macho guys <laughs> tend to be going into this scenario. And for that, what you need is big personalities. And that's what they went for. So you got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Apollo Creed and Jesse the Body Ventura and then a bunch of other very interesting characters. And so they're just all just filled with life because the actors that they cast are just bigger than life personalities. And once again, going back to those behind the scenes documentaries that I told you to check out before, you just watch the interviews and the stories of how they're behaving on set, trying to one up each other. You see that and you feel that in the movie itself. What's the matter? The CIA got you pushing too many pencils? I mean, when you talk about the most macho movies of all time, certainly Predator is in the running. This is a movie that just takes the macho sliders and pushes them all the way up to 11. From there, we'll talk about the score, and it has an amazing score from Alan Silvestri. He'd already established himself as one of the greats by doing Back to the Future a couple years before this, but he, this one established him as someone that's not just a one-hit wonder. He was truly going to be one of the greats, and here we are 30 years later, and he's still scoring Avengers movies. But probably the best thing that I can say about this movie, and coming from me, this is a huge compliment for this movie, is that I never think about this movie as an Arnold movie. Now, it has the classic Arnold moments and the classic Arnold one-liners and memes in the film. No! Get to the chopper! But this is one of the few movies that Arnold is in where he doesn't overshadow the film. The film takes the lead. He's just a solid actor in the film that brings all of his Arnoldisms to the film, but it transcends his persona. And I don't think that's true of most Arnold movies. Most movies that Arnold is in, I think about it distinctly as an Arnold movie, whereas I think of Predator as just a great action thriller. With that said, let's move on to the bad. Since I think this is one of the great action movies of all time, really these are all just nitpicks, but some of the special effects, in particular the Predator's vision, the heat vision effect that they used, I don't think it holds up particularly well. 
Also, the way that they decided to do the Predator's voice and the Predator talking, I've never really cared for that stuff. It feels, it feels off. It feels out of place in the movie. Likewise, since they decided to cast personalities for the film, they're not really characters. They really are just the personalities. And so you just have Jesse the Body Ventura essentially just being himself on screen. Then you have guys that's the dirty joke guy, but there's not a lot of depth there. Fun to watch not a lot of depth. And somewhat because of that, when the movie tries to go into kind of deeper emotional moments, in particular as the movie progresses and some of the guys start to lose and their friends start to die, some of those moments feel out of place in the film. They ring a little bit hollow and don't work particularly well because they haven't really established these characters as characters with depth that would earn these big emotional moments. But honestly, those are really just nitpicks. I think that this is a great movie. But before I give my rating and share a few comments from you guys on the film, be sure to tell me what you think about it down below in the comment section. Do you love it? Do you think it's overrated? And if you haven't seen it, when are you going to go and check it out? And if you have checked it out for the first time just now, please let me know about that as well. Also, after this video is done, check out this playlist right up here of my ranking videos of my favorite action franchises from the 80s and the 90s, Terminator, Lethal Weapon, all the great stuff. Check it out right up here. Here's what some of you guys had to say over on my poll about the movie. The Incredible Hulk said, Predator is great. Please don't judge me, but Predator is my favorite movie of all time. General Napkin, Predator is great. I'm surprised this many people haven't seen it. It's pretty surprising. 56% <laughs> of my viewers haven't seen the movie. I agree with you on that one. Damon Atkins, Predator is overrated. The movie is good, but I feel like it's praised too much. The action is well done and Arnold is really good in the main, but I think the other characters don't stand out much. The comedy could have been better and some scenes don't work for me. Fair enough. Nacer Casso, Predator is overrated. Overrated big time. Joseph Wilson, I've never seen Predator. I've never heard of it. Well, that's why I'm doing this series, because I want more people to check out this movie that I think is great. Hopefully you'll check it out because of this video. But as for me, I would give this one an A and a 9.5 out of 10. If you like this video, be sure to check out that playlist of my ranking of the best 80s and 90s action movie franchises. And thank you so much for watching.